So where did that hair do come from? How, when, why, what? Because I like it, man. So, I mean, for the last 10 years, my I've been losing, like steadily losing more and more hair. And uh, it sucks because my dad actually has a full head of hair. And on his side of the family, his dad had a lot of hair. But on my grandfather's side, like my, my mom's side, basically, I got his genes. So like my grandfather started losing his hair in his 20s. So my hair started for a while, like I had a, a mohawk and that was cool. But then as the hair started more and more to thin out and you could see a bald spot right here on the top, like at the back kind of, I just, I started shaving more and more of it. Right. So I shaved the back, I shaved the sides, and then I kind of just left this, this piece, this giant piece of hair, like sticking up, like right in the front. I'm like, oh, I'll just kind of leave it like that. Oh, Island. That's. That's kind of how. Does that have a name? That's kind of how it worked out. I don't even know if it has a, a, a name or a What's hairstyle. Name you know who else has this hair actually? Because I thought it was an original thing. The um, uh, what's his name? The singer from the band Tool, Maynard Keenan. I think that's his name. He has. Someone sent me a photo of him, like a fairly recent photo with with funny enough with the same Ray Ban frames right. and that same exact hair. Yeah. No, I've seen it. I've seen it before. So when I first so, saw you, I wasn't like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Yeah. <laughs> Cause I, I've so, seen it before. It's a little bold. I was like, mm, I would never, I would never do it. I mean, yeah. that's just me. I mean, I would just go full bald. I mean, I would commit to it. I've done it before. I've shaved my head and I got a lot of compliments, but I just, I missed it. So I'm like, I'm just at this point, I'm just holding on to the last bit of hair. Right. I have, and as it can, if it continues to, to thin out at some point, I'm probably just gonna throw in the towel and just, yeah. you can just shave it all. You just can't let go right now. It's a, it's a. It's so hard to let, let go, go of it, man. Just let go. Just let go. <laughs> let go, man. Or just name it. I'd like to know. Well, what, it what, looks like a Vernon. What do the people of the internet think? Do you think I should just bick it? Oh, buddy, should I just shave just it? Get fucking torched on. I don't it. care. They're gonna be like, "What the hell is that piece of shit?" I mean, ultimately, I don't really care what other people think, but I'm curious. I mean, I'm you, curious you what you think. Care. You clearly don't. No, I mean, <laughs> yeah. do you think a guy with a guy with multiple piercings and this weird ass hairstyle really cares what other people uh, think? Probably not. I used to have a nose ring. Yeah. I kind of want to get back. Yeah. Yeah. I've been wanting to for a while, but I need a girl to come with me. So, if any girls want to come with me while I get my nose ring, then uh, I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, I think, yo, when I first saw it, I was like... Yeah. You bring oh. bring that microphone a little closer to you? Yeah. No, I don't think I will. I don't a, think I will. He's out of practice, ladies and gentlemen, because he just came back from vacation. <laughs> yeah, I just Which we'll talk about that um, in a bit. Yeah, went to Kelowna this past weekend. Uh, Got an Airbnb with a few friends. Uh, went to Seattle last weekend. So, man, fuck, I didn't, I didn't tell you about this, but we potentially could bring on a very notable NBA player on the podcast if the fucking chips align. But it would be hard. So, how? It, what happened? Okay. Just for some context, I already know the answer to this, but you have no idea who Paolo Bancaro is, right? I'm assuming. I do not, no. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you didn't fucking know who Drake was until you searched him up, so. <laughs> okay, come on. I know who Drake, I, I've heard of him. I just, you asked me if he had walked past you in the street, would you recognize him? I gave you an honest answer. I said no, <laughs> until I had to look him up and I'm like, oh, it's that guy. Yeah, I mean, dude. He's better than the Beatles. He just surpassed Whoa. the Beatles with a hundred. Like, watch it now, watch it. <laughs> Some shit that people have considered legendary or, or classic are not are not good. They're just not. If you listen to the Beatles, it's just like it's you're so mediocre. You give me nothing. You can't give me 10, 20 songs that are considered good, in my opinion, from the wow. Beatles. You can't. You wow. Can't. And like really? I said before, on the floor, J-Lo Pitbull is better than, any pit, better than any Beatles song that's ever come out. Wow. 
I'm shocked. Fucking I'm, sue me. I'm completely, I'm completely shocked. Except for yesterday. Oh, it's a beautiful song by the Beatles. Yesterday. Like I said, they have, I'm not the biggest Beatles fan. I'm not going to say they're the greatest band in the world, but they were hugely inf influential at that period of time. And like the Yellow Submarine. There's You're No, I don't like Yellow that song. Submarine no, I don't like that fucking... song, but they, they've made way better songs. But... I'm, and again, I'm not going to say they're the greatest band in the world, but uh, to say that J Lo's song—I mean, look, Jennifer Lopez, people of oh God, TikTok, Instagram, where are you following us? On the floor, Jennifer Lopez featuring Mr. Worldwide Pitbull himself is the single greatest song ever made, better than any Beatles song. You can debate if it's the best song ever, but it's better than any Beatles song ever made, guaranteed. Wow. One of the lines in the song is if you're a criminal, then kill it on the floor. How much more of a masterpiece could it be? How much how much better could that be, could that get? Eh, I can't. I don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't call that the most sophisticated lyric in the world, but, <sighs> but whatever. To to each one's own. Yeah. Sorry, I just I have to say that, man. You know, because yeah, the Beatles are. Just, they ain't do it for me. Can't do it for me. But going back to um, the Seattle trip, I had a very cool moment. Um, we uh, so every year I didn't know this, but Isaiah Thomas, an NBA player from Seattle, holds a annual. Um, tournament called Zeke End, and me and my buddy actually went up there, and we I, I had no idea, I had no idea until we got there, and um, basically it's just a two day tournament where, you know, there's a bunch of teams that participate. It's a tournament. It's a little like it's more of like a charity type thing, but there's like NBA players that come and play. Um, so this year it was like Dejounte Murray, Paolo Banquero. Nate Robinson came through. Um, a couple other guys. And it's a bunch of pro, pro players that um, play overseas or used to play in the NBA that come by. So it's very competitive. Okay. So this year I went. It was, we went on the Sunday, the second day. And um, we watched Paolo Bancaro play. And for people that don't know, Paolo Bancaro was the number one overall pick in the NBA draft this year. Um, ha he's favored to win the rookie of the year. He's gonna be, um, you know, a lot of scouts, a lot of people think he's gonna be um the real deal. I think I think so too. After seeing him play, he's a legit six yeah. ten point guard. Um, you don't know anything about basketball, so I'm I do not. But it sounds like he's got some skills. Yeah, he's, he's got some talent. He's a, he's a big boy. Fuck, he's huge. He's fucking massive. I looked at him. I'm like, wow, you got some fucking size to you, buddy. Um, How tall is he? Uh, around 6'10". 6'9", 6'10". That's, that's tall. Yeah. That's tall. Right. So we went and watched him play, and uh, I actually, you know, gave him a handshake in the middle of the game, gave him a high five. And so here's where it gets cool. I took a video of him making a really good move, like a really, like, like a sick move. And what he did is he reposted it on his story. I tagged him, right? You know how Instagram works. When you tag someone, it go it, it notifies them, right? Yeah, yeah. And he that's cool. reposted it. So why that's cool is because he's not the type of guy that reposts everything people tag him in. Right. Right. Selective. You, yeah. So if he was gonna, if yeah. he was gonna po if he was gonna repost everything everyone tagged him in, he would have over eight hundred stories on his fucking Instagram stories, right? But he's very selective, right? Because he's he's a brand now. He's he's a you know someone that's like I wouldn't say celebrity, but he's on his way to becoming a celebrity. Um, and so he reposted me. So what happens now is any DM I send him is going to go to his main inbox. It's not going to go to his requests. Really? That's how that's it how it works. That's I didn't know that works. because okay. Because he doesn't follow me. Yeah, yeah. So when I 
when I if he didn't repost that story and when I message him, it would go to his request. Right. And of course, he probably has millions and millions of requests of messages. People message sure. him, right? And he's not going to see it. But since he reposted it, automatically everything I send him is going to go to his main inbox. So whenever he gets a message, he'll like he'll have to look at it because it's someone he knows. He's someone he follows or someone that's of importance to him because it went in his main and he'll actually see it. Right. So okay. this is where, ah, fuck, I keep pushing this. Paolo, man, come on, bro. Come on the pod. I sent him a message. I didn't tell you this. I sent him a paragraph. I'm like, yo, man, thank you again for the repost. I would love to have you on the podcast. You know, a lot of the kids I coach are, um, you know, they would uh, love to, t you know, listen to you speak. And, um, you know, this would be really cool if you could come on. And he actually looked at the message, but didn't reply. So that's, is he, uh, he's not, he's not living in Vancouver, is he? No, he's in Seattle, but he, yeah, he plays for the Orlando magic okay. in Florida. So right. he's just going to train. Yeah. I mean. Would it be amazing to have a guest of that caliber on the show? Of course it would be, but th I think that's going to be, for where this show is at right now, that's going to be a little bit of a tough, but it's not impossible. We're going to build that up over time as we get, you know, we've got we we've got some surprises. We've got some stuff in the works. Mm -hmm. So, right. but... Um, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, there's no reason for him to come on, right? I mean... We don't have that big of a following yet. It would just completely. I mean, I. It, but you know what you got. You know what you got to keep in your head though is you got to keep thinking positive. You got to be. You got to keep keep thinking big. Like, no, that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get this person. Yeah. Right. So just. Oh, it will. It will happen. There's no doubt about it. It's just. Um, yeah, I just got to keep pushing. I mean, anything could happen, man. People don't realize how easy it is to actually, like, connect and network my, with it, a lot of people. In my in my experience, once you get one or two, like, if you can get one or two guests that have a pretty big social media following, every time I've done something like that on a podcast, that has helped grow like I, I i would get new audience i would get new people new subscribers because that person's also promoting it because they're on it right so it definitely it definitely helps and and sometimes you can make connections mm -hmm. right oh because you don't know who that person, person knows I told you who's coming if, on yeah but if that person has a good experience they're gonna want to tell other people mm -hmm. their buddies mm -hmm. you got to go on most podcast oh right? and this guy's buddies are Big fish. They're good. They're legit. You know what I'm talking about, right? We're not going to disclose it. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. No. He's coming on. And that will make this podcast go to another level. Absolutely. I'm fucking ready for it. Yeah. I'm a fucking savage with this right now. Yeah. You know, you mentioned. Um, you mentioned this guy that lives in this this player that lives in Seattle. You you took a trip to Seattle, so we watched the Mariners play, and um, the Angels were in town. Okay, and, uh, Shohei Otani was playing. Um, it's a pretty underwhelming sport because it's a three hour thing where you got to sit there and really like commit. Unless you unless you're unless you're a fan of the Mariners, like that's your team, then. I understand why some people would think it's boring. Um, but after that, we went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which was so sick. So fucking sick. I didn't, I didn't know there was, like, pop culture in there. Like, there's, like, different hip-hop artists, um, you know, movies. There's a horror section. I love horror. Yeah. I love I, I've been to that, the Museum of Pop Culture. Is that what, yeah. is that what it's called? So yeah, sick. it's got everything in there. So dope. Yeah. 
I love the scary. You know, the crazy thing is, I, if you look at, um, because don't don't they have, uh, they have some Jimi Hendrix. They had like Jimi Hendrix outfit, and and I can't remember if they had Prince's outfit, but you look at what they wore, you realize, man, those people were way smaller than you expected them to be. Mm -hmm. Like, how does that, how did that dude fit into that tiny outfit? Like, Jimi Hendrix was a pretty skinny guy. I don't think I saw right. Jimmy there, or was it maybe? Maybe I'm thinking of Prince because I know Prince was a short, kind of a small guy, yeah. right? And I, I, it must have been, it must have been his outfit that I was looking at. I was like, mm. wow, that's he was a really small dude because you see that guy in music videos and concerts, and he's he's such a big personality, right? So you think, and it's hard to tell how big people are, how tall people are on camera, but I I, I like read his bio and realized he, he's. He, he was a small guy, like right. not physically impressive, yeah, yeah. right? If you stood next to him, you'd be towering yeah. over him. And yet he had this huge presence, mm. right? That's interesting you say that. A lot of people like Conor McGregor, his presence would tell you he's like 6'3", but the guy's like 5'7", five, 5'8". Five, it's crazy, right? A lot of, a lot of, yeah. a lot of, I've, I know what you mean exactly. Cause like someone like Al Pacino, such a presence, right? Yeah. Crazy presence, but he's what? Like five. Yeah. He's not that tall. Seven, I don't think. Yeah. Right? So you never think. No, I wouldn't call him like five, seven. If you're five, seven or five, eight, that's probably not, I mean, some people might classify that as short, but, but it's not imposing for sure. No. I mean, Tom Cruise is probably around that height too. I think he's Tom five, Cruise. seven or is he five, six or something? I can't remember how. Fuck. I thought yeah. he was, he, he seems like you'd be like 6'1". No, 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 no. No, Tom Cruise is shorter. Th- I mean, I'm 5'10", and I'm pretty sure Tom Cruise oh, is, Alex. I'm looking it up five right ten? now. 5'10"? Come on, you're being generous. You think I'm shorter than 5'10"? If you're 5'10", then I'm 6'3". I'm pretty sure I'm 5'10". Are you? I'm pretty sure. Okay, well then I'm six three. But I haven't I haven't actually measured myself That's in fine. quite a while. You can say five. Ten, Maybe I'm five I'm nine and a half. I'm gonna I tell don't myself know. I'm six three. Is that cool? Yeah, go ahead. You know what's a really good feeling when you post something on Instagram and a really really attractive girl likes the photo. It's kind of just let's like, it's let's look up Tom Cruise. Okay, do you want to know how tall Tom Cruise is? Mm-hmm. Lay it on me, daddy. Here's his here's his bio. Five seven. Tom Cruise is five seven. But again, it's like the the guy acts these like people, he's their their personalities, right? Their assertiveness, their confidence, their aggressiveness, depending on the person, right? It just it gives you a different impression of somebody. And so the re there there's like a disconnect between who that person is actually is in real life and the persona that they are mm. as a as a celebrity right, right. like you don't kevin expect durant, it you know who kevin durant is oh yeah 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 he acts like he's fucking five four fucking weirdo yeah yeah fucking simpy beta cuck <laughs> he's a weird man it's crazy to think like no matter how good of an athlete you are how much I'm looking him up to see how tall he is seven feet by the way oh jesus yeah. six six foot ten that's what yeah, wikipedia says six ten but that's right fucking cap he's a legit yeah. seven footer but well i was saying is yeah. he no matter how much money you make how good you become in your sport because he's arguably a top three scorer of all time like Daddy can score the basketball. He can fucking play. Okay? Like, there's no argue, there's no debate about that. But he acts like a 13-year-old little boy that isn't getting what he wants. And it's just fucking... It just makes... It's like, like, in what way? Well, he's, he's a victim of social media. I don't know if... I don't know if you well, like people pile on. They're constantly so shitting on him. The the timeline with Kevin Durant is he played for Oklahoma City. That was his first team. Okay, he left Oklahoma City 
which is fine, to go play with Golden State Warriors. Now, mind you, okay. the Golden State Warriors, when he joined them, Golden State made to the finals before that, that the year before, and they won the most games in regular season history. So he joined a super team, and he made it into a mega super team. Won a couple championships, and then with no reason at all, decided to leave Golden State and go to Brooklyn. And he has a burner on Twitter where he actually replies to people tweeting at him, making fun of him, and, you know, just, like, giving him shit. He actually replies to those. Um, and he just, yeah, man, I don't, he just, he has a very fragile ego. He's very insecure. And it just makes you think, like, no matter how big you get and how, no matter how, you know, how, how much, you know, spotlight and like how much respect you have with your peers and people looking up to you, who you are as a yeah. person, you, it's always going to show. If you're insecure, right? And he, he's, he's just, making, yeah, and I he think, loves drama, man. Like he's making drama right now. He wants to leave the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah. He's making all these allegations. He's trying to like, you know, tell people he's retiring, right? Like he's, I looked him up. He's so he's 33. Is that right? So he's in his early 30s. Yeah. And he's been doing it for how long? Playing how long professionally? Fifth, he's in his 14th or 15th year. Wow. Okay. And he's been good for that long. Right. Like he's legit. But to go back to the point about, about insecurities, I mean, this is the way I think, but if you are already an insecure person, I think once you get some kind of celebrity status, that amplifies like like I, I think that just brings out what is already like that's your personality right and money oftentimes makes things worse right it's like the quote people say it just it amplifies it everything it reveals it oh yeah right it, I, th I think i think uh people once you get power and money that starts to like, that shows your true colors for better or worse right and so I really, I really respect people that have fame and money and influence, and they're still a decent human being. They don't, they don't treat fans like they're, you know, like, why are you talking to me kind of a thing. They're grateful. Actually, that's probably to me the most important, the most important word, right, is to be, no matter where you are in your career, is to always be grateful and have have the mindset that you know what this this can get taken away from me at any moment. And we've seen that happen, right? right? We've seen people. Right. We talked about it with cancel culture. All of that can go away at a moment's notice. You could lose your career, right? You can lose people you love. You can lose your money, right? If you whether you piss it away on I don't know buying Lamborghinis or buying up islands, whatever rich people do, right? You could lose it at any moment. So. To not be grateful and to be a complete shithead to people and treat them badly, I, I don't even understand that. Mm. The thing with Kevin Durant though is that he doesn't. He's he's still a really nice guy. He's a good guy. Like he hasn't done anything that's pissed anyone off. He's actually he's genuinely pretty good to his fans. It's just he's he acts like he's a he's a thirteen year old little boy that's getting bullied on social media. And he falls into that trap. I just don't understand why no one on his team tells him, man, get the fuck off of that. Like, he's a perfect example of how social media is, like, fucking with some people, man. Like, you're looking, like, Kevin Durant, you're, you're Kevin Durant, daddy. Get the fuck off of social, why do you care? Why do you, what, would it, what? You make millions, first of all. So, like, whatever, you yeah. could just say, oh, well. You know, I it's you know what, and it's not uh it's it's not healthy. Right? I mean it just isn't. If you've got problem if you have millions of followers and you've got I mean, I can't imagine what that's even like to manage, just seeing all these comments, negative, whatever people want to say. I mean I don't blame some people. I've seen some celebrities just go cold turkey, right? They're like, I'm closing my Twitter account, closing my Instagram. Now, they're, they're probably better off without it, mm -hmm. don't you think? 
And it gets to the point where it's like this is really affect, affecting well, yeah, his, my his my case, mental health. Fuck, right? Yeah, get the fuck off of it. Like, get off of it now. But almost, I he almost like he's one. I feel like he gets fuel from that almost. Like he almost like needs to go on it to gain some more motivation and some energy. I feel like that's one part of it that people don't under, maybe don't un, like see with Kevin Durant. Like maybe he does need to go on social media to actually get him up in the morning to go train to go prove people wrong right and if it's if that's the angle he's going from then by all means like if that's gonna make you get get up and like do your job work on your craft get better give us unbelievable performances in games then by all means go read it but when it comes to the point where you're you're doing a little too much. Like, you're acting like a little fucking, you know, like a little child, man. And I don't know. Maybe it's just, maybe that's... Is there, is there a recent example that you can think of? Um. Well, there's well, there, there's a bunch. I mean, he's been, he's been on Twitter. F- well, I mean, like... Not necessarily, don't, we don't need minutes. to go through them all, but just like, I'm just curious. Just one example. that you, any, Anything that comes to mind. Well, any example right now, the 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 situation with him right now is he plays for the Brooklyn Nets and he wants to get traded again. Like he wants to leave the team. So what he said is that he wants the coach Steve Nash and the general manager to be fired. Right. So he's coming from an entitled place where he thinks he can just like say something and get people fired, which he probably can because he's such a fucking prominent figure in the league. And he knows that. Right. And now what he's doing is like he's threatening the idea that he might retire unless he gets traded. And it's just like, dude, like, now I'm starting to think, you think you're a little too important. Like, you think you're too important for your own good. It's like, nah, no one cares, man. Like, just... Go fucking play. Like, just shut up. Stop with all this shit. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, fair enough. I, I just see, I'm a basketball fan, so yeah, I, yeah, just, yeah. I that's all the talk I hear now about Kem Durant, what the fuck he's doing, what, where is he going to go, is he going to stay, is he going to retire, is he going to fucking, you know, you know, do whatever, I don't change sports, fuck, who knows, but I, I was thinking about this, have you heard of Andrew Tate? No. Oh, fuck. Who, who is Andrew oh, Tate? Oh, seriously? Really? Am I going to make some people mad? Oh, this guy. Really? No, I'm serious. Oh, I kind of want you to like... I have okay. no he's idea guy, who... He calls himself Top G. Okay. He's this very alpha character that has basically said at some point that women are property... And men should cheat. You kind of get, you kind of get where I'm going to, right? Like he's, and so every time you open your TikTok or Instagram, it's a video of this guy, and it's 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 strategic. He's actually getting people to pump out content of him. So he runs this thing called Hustlers University, and he has about a hundred thousand students where he gets them to. Uh, he teaches them some things and then he gets them to actually like put out content of him on TikTok and Instagram and he's been blowing the fuck up. Really? He's a lot of people like he he basically has a cult of followers that adore everything he says and there's people out there that would rather see him dead essentially. Like he's a pretty big douchebag in the set like in the sense of the word but like he's getting a lot of following and he says a lot of controversial shit like that where um he gets a lot of pushback on and a lot of people agree on um but yeah he's uh i'm surprised you haven't heard of him i guess we can't fucking talk about him now you have fucking heard of him yeah we'll, we'll we'll have to follow up on another episode there's a lot of shit that i don't know that you do 
But I'm surprised you don't know. Like, What's his name again? Andrew Tate. Andrew right Tate. Right now. Pl- right now. We I'm looking. Look at, I'm gonna look him up. Actually, Andrew Tate. Yeah. So someone posted a photo on Instagram where it's basically a petition to get Andrew Tate canceled. Um, and it's gained over like a million likes and fucking so many comments. But some people are really dumb. And you know why? Because some people don't realize that this is his brand. To say over the fucking edge shit. And talk about sensitive topics. And that's his brand. Like that's how he makes money. That's how people listen to him. That's why he's become so popular. It's because it's his brand. He's a genius marketer. And people don't really like... That's with everything. That's with every like if you look at Skip Bayless from ESPN for sports people, they you know what I'm talking about. This guy is known to be a LeBron hater. Okay? Everything he says, everything he does, the narrative he pushes is that he's a fuck he hates he basically never defends LeBron like his goal is to never defend LeBron he tries not to because that's what he did that once like a long time ago it was like an MJ versus LeBron debate and he basically said there's no fucking way LeBron is on his level and he got a lot of heat for it and a lot of attention so now he's pushed he's been pushing that narrative for fucking over 10 years right and LeBron has never apparently never responded to him never said anything but I guarantee you Behind closed doors, Skip and LeBron have talked like, hey, LeBron, this is what I'm, this is my brand now. This is how we get viewers on ESPN. This is what is going to be, you know, getting our ratings higher. So don't get offended when I say that I don't think you're a good basketball player. Right? Well, LeBron, I mean, that might, that might be, that might be one theory. You think it maybe started innocently. That's just, that's just with everything. He probably legitimately did not like LeBron and maybe it kind of just... Okay, yeah, okay, right. so whatever. Like, it doesn't matter what... Like, let's say he doesn't... He genuinely doesn't like LeBron. Cool. It's getting views. It's getting ratings. He's... So. Well, and that's the thing, though. Like, if... Watch... Listening to that clip and watching it, you gotta come... You gotta listen to it in a, from an angle where you know that this is what... He is like, this is the brand he's trying to push, though. Like, that's that's what people don't understand. Andrew Andrew Tate said something once and it blew up because it was so over the edge. He got so much attention from that. So he's going to keep doing it, even though he doesn't believe in it. Like what you said like oh he he need he sh- if that's he true must be a certain type of person to actually be saying these right. things man you would be surprised how but you know what some people can be like if that's true i have even less respect for him because now he's oh, I mean, just no, it's, he's just I, saying I, stuff I, because it because he's going to get views and uh, like i don't know if he's monetizing his he's obviously monetizing his content somehow yeah, through ads or whatever. He's making a lot. Does he, does of he have any? Does he any have any kind of product? Uh, does he sell anything? Well, he has hu- what he calls Hustlers University, where he okay. has like over a hundred thousand students, where he teaches them how to be an alpha, whatever the tent, like the strategies and marketing and stuff. And what I've heard, what I've seen and heard is that he um, basically gets his students to recruit other people to also recruit other people to pump out content of him. So whenever you Go on your TikTok. The first thing you'll see is Andrew Tate. Okay, it's a clip of Andrew Tate, right? And man, he has been like he. I haven't. I don't remember someone that's exploded onto the scene as fast and as consistent as this guy. In I don't even know how many. Like he's been on like thirty different podcasts, like a hundred different like live streams. Like he's everywhere, and that's the that's his goal. That's what he wants. And people just don't like what he says. Is in it's his business now. He might not even believe in anything he says anymore. He might not even be a. He might not even support it. But now it's, it's too late. 
It's too late. He's too far gone. He has to say these things. Like, what? What is he going to do? Give up all them? Right. Like, if he goes and says, oh, you know, cheating is bad. Like, cheating is, like, you... People are going to be like, oh, wow. Like, people are just not going to... People listen to him for a reason. He has a cult. He has a following. Right? And people... I just feel like some people don't understand that now. It's just... And some people do do actually agree with him. Some some of the things he says. So, you know, yeah, do, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of people do, right? And that's why that's, he's that's so part of the problem. He's now. just cultivating this toxic masculinity, which I don't agree with. But I mean, whatever. Yeah. So I mean, want to know what's toxic? Toxic behavior. You've been following this Ezra Miller stuff. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but uh, I was kind of surprised that you didn't you didn't know who he was. Yeah, you sent me an, an actor. Of him and, uh, for those for those that follow entertainment news, Ezra Miller, who is um, you know his career really took off when you know he got the got the contract from DC Comics to to, pl- to play the Flash in those movies. I mean, he was in Aquaman, or not Aquaman? Was he in Aquaman? No. Um, uh, uh, Justice League, Justice League as the Flash. So his career's really taken off. He's had so many run-ins with the law and just really vile behavior that I've never seen someone try so hard to destroy their career. But then in 2020, a video surfaced of a single deleted tweet that appeared to show him strangling a woman and throwing her throwing her to the ground. The video was then confirmed by Variety to have taken place at a bar. And the employee I actually identified him. So it started with it started with the choking and throwing the person to the ground like, thing. That just sounds like he's just a scumbag person. He, like, in in Hawaii, like... he was arrested in Hawaii uh f- for what what police say was a physical altercation with patrons having hurled after after having hurled obscenities at clients at a karaoke bar and was charged with disorderly conduct and harassment. Three weeks later, he was again taken into custody for second degree assault. They arrested him for throwing a chair which hit a 26 year old woman and left a half inch cut on her forehead after being told to leave during a private get together. Uh, Miller was arrested 20 minutes after the attack during a traffic stop. Again, I mean, it's just like, it goes on and on and on. He, he started he started a, a really strange relationship with an underage girl as well. And then, and then the girl ran away from home and was living with him on some ranch that he owns. Like, just really fucking weird shit. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. Seems like he has a most recent. Most recently, uh, he was summoned to court because he broke into somebody's house to steal alcohol. Like, why? You've got broke? probably millions of dollars in the bank. Why would you? I mean, if ever there was a cry for help, like he's he's disturbed. Seriously, I don't know what's going on with him, but you've got all the money in the world. Just go to the fucking liquor store and buy. Like, why are you breaking into people's houses and stealing alcohol? That's just bizarre. I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, he he definitely has some internal issues. There's something going on. Like, he he's very being very yeah. self-destructive. Mm. You know, it's almost like I don't know if he wants to be caught or what it is that's going on. He's got necessarily. He's got some demons. I don't think. He, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I don't think he wants to be caught. Right. I think if he wanted to be. He would he would already be caught, right? So I mean I don't know. You know yeah, and as some people were saying that this this movie, which they've already shot, it's already shot. They're doing the it's not coming out till next year, but they're doing the effects. So the money's being spent. So it's not like Warner Brothers can just can't like just delete throw the movie in the garbage because mm-hmm. they've spent how many hundreds of millions of dollars. So they've got to release this thing and hopefully, you know, this stuff blows over if he he doesn't like fucking kill someone well that's the other thing like uh, people are saying like that's you can't i wouldn't be surprised if if, some fucked up i mean he's already assaulted several people it wouldn't surprise me that like the next thing we're gonna hear is that he's murdered somebody yeah right and so i I, like i said i've never seen someone 
tries so hard to destroy their career. I don't know what's going on with him. I hope he gets the help that he needs. I, just, I don't want to linger too long on it, but again, it's just you, you, you sometimes wonder why does somebody with so much fame, so much influence, so much money, and potentially a really successful career going forward, why would you jeopardize that? I, I, I don't know. Well, it's I don't know, man. It's, it's fact, weird. That's Mental health. That's the topic we talked about. Money doesn't build character. It reveals it, right? You, I mean, he, he, he was... He had some demons all along, man. Yeah, was, I mean, it's not like he just... It's not like he turned into this person overnight. That just funny. doesn't happen, he's right? He's been like... The, he's, that's how he was wired, right? Yeah. Uh, he, he hasn't gotten the help he needs, and what's worse than fame and fame and money to really get you going, right? Just destroys people, right? Yeah. Ruins and ruins some lives, unfortunately, because he could be using that money and influence to help people that are disadvantaged, but he's just chosen it to just be completely reckless. So I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. We'll see. Mm. I hope he, I hope he gets better. I mean, mental health is a, like uh, is a topic that we come back to on this podcast, and we'll definitely talk about it's it in the future. About enough and not talked about enough, especially when it comes to. You know, I mean, for someone like you, for what you do, coaching mm. basketball, I mean, athletes are human beings just like anybody else. Why would anybody think that they're they're under immense pressure? Yep. The more money they make, the more pressure they have, right? Mm. Would you say that's a fair statement? The more money you make in yeah. professional league, the, the more pressure there is to perform. I also think once you get that, once you get that level, man, like... It becomes harder when you don't have someone to talk about, right? Because talk to, right? Like I, it's yeah. a lot of men, in particular, still keep it to themselves, and it it just destroys them, right? Like you see so many suicides, you see so many men that are depressed, and um, they they don't. I I think a lot of a people real thing. Like here's yeah. man, here, it's. Depression, anxiety, man, is so real. It's one of those things where it's one of the only things because I'm I'm the type of guy that I gotta see it to believe it type thing where it's real, real, um, um, it, intangible things are what are real to me. Like this, this couch this cup, right? Me talking to you, the sound that's coming out of my mouth. These are the things that are real, things that yeah. I can see, so things that I can sense. Mental health, like anxiety and depression where you can't see, it's not an intangible thing in the physical world is r the realest thing to something that you can't see with your two, uh, two eyes. Because... A lot of people just, a lot of people that are, um, you know, push back on mental health, mental illness, where they're like, oh, it's it's something that people have made up for themselves to give themselves a pass or. Well, that's what Andrew Tate seems yeah, to believe. Exactly. Right? He doesn't believe it's a real I, thing. I, I, that's one thing I, I don't agree with. Do not agree with that one all. bit. And it's such a real thing that you can almost, you can almost like feel the, the density and the weight of it right like someone that's in a phase of depression or an anxiety it's you can like grasp onto it almost it's so real man that people don't it's real it's real it's one of the realest Absolutely. things and that are you know what i'm trying to say i've never i mean i I'm I'm not going to mention names cuz that's that's not important and I want to protect the privacy of people but I mean I have been in relationships with people that were chronically depressed and it's it was hard for me for them and it was also hard for me and it was a wake up call to me because at first it was just I don't know what do I do what do I say what can I say right I I didn't know how did you know? I they didn't were, know how to react. How did you know they were in it? Did they tell you themselves? Like, did they? Did they? Did they, 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 they did. They, they, they meant. They prepared me for it. They told me that, you know, there are times where, 
um, this, this, this one girl that I was dating, I mean, she was suicidal at one point before we started dating, but she did try to end her life before. Right. And that was new to me. That's, I just, I've never known anybody. I, it was like a complete foreign concept. Like, why, why would you do that? Why, you know, uh, and I've been, there've been times in my life where, yeah, things didn't go well, but I, I've never, it would never cross my mind to just pack it in and call it quits and, you know, end my own life. So going through that rough time with her really helped and, and learning more about it and doing reading on it to try to understand, at least empathize because that wasn't in my head, but at least mm. I could make an effort, right? To try and put myself in, in that person's shoes as best as I possibly could, right? To at least equip myself with the tools to sort of like navigate mm. that. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was tough. I mean, there are times too where, you know, they would have panic attacks. We would go to a public setting. You, you don't even know what would trigger it, mm -hmm. right? We could be walking in the mall, yep. all of a sudden panic attack, like shuts down. Like I have to get out of here. I have to, we have to leave. We have to leave right now. It's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and I was getting freaked out like, whoa. Right. Cause it was just like, it was that quick. Like we need to leave right now. Like just complete shutdown. Right. What do you, what do you do? Like it, it happened mm -hmm. quite a few times and it was really difficult to deal with, but it's, it's one of the things so I, I, we all need to learn a little bit yeah, more yeah, about it. Right. It's, it's, so it's easy. It's, it's so a cop out, man. It's a cop out to just say, "Oh, just suck it up, just just get better." It's bullshit. Just change your it's mind. Bullshit. Change your mindset. No. no, it's not that easy no. for some people. No. It really isn't. And you know what I hate more? I hated this growing up, man. I hated it. Um, I've dealt with my bouts of depression and anxiety, and I remember growing up, being in high school, even elementary, even early as that. I remember talking to a lot of people about it. And I would tell them, man, I'm I'm going through it right now. I don't know what it is. I don't know what I've done, what I've seen. I don't know what, I, I just don't know, but I'm going through it and I can't explain it. I just don't have the words in my arsenal to explain what I'm going through. And this is, one of the worst things you can tell someone that's going through it is to tell them that A, they should get over it and suck it up and B, tell them to think about it like as if, oh, well, you got to understand you could have it worse. You know, there's people that are out there that don't, you know, that don't know when their next meal is coming or don't well, so know. Yeah, tell me something I don't know, yeah, but that doesn't help you. Fine. Like I get where you're, I, yeah. I understand that. I absolutely have gratitude, but you're telling me I can't feel like I want to fucking die. Like the, you can't, you, you're telling yeah. me I don't have the right to feel shitty. I don't have the right to feel depressed for no apparent reason. I hated that, man. I Yeah, like, oh, it's, it's definitely. Fuck you. Like, fuck you, man. I want... I do count my blessing and I still feel this way. What? What do you, you I'm not allowed to feel I'm not allowed to feel depressed. I'm not allowed to feel anxious because I know when my next meal is coming. Sure, yes, I understand. A lot of people don't know when their next meal is coming. And I empathize and I sympathize for those people tremendously. But to say that I'm not allowed to feel the way I do because I have it better than a lot of people, it's it's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't think it comes from a a bad place because you know you have you have sometimes you have friends and friends no, and family, and but it is it, it it but it is ignorant to just say it like because you have no idea, you have no no concept to say that, and it isn't helpful to because that is effectively what they're saying, right? That oh that you can't, you're not allowed to feel that, right? 
that's probably not what they mean. That's not what they intend when they say 100%. that to you. No, right? And they're trying to help me. But it, genuinely... it's it's damaging though. It really is damaging to say that to somebody mm. who's going through, uh, you know, who's going through a depressed part of their life, right? It's um, it's really really hard, and you can't as if you've never experienced it, man. You just don't it's, know, man. It's one of those things. I remember, I wouldn't wish it upon my worst enemy depression no matter like it, it wouldn't matter who it is I wouldn't want that person to go through that f process that that level of paralyzation it's just like it's worse than any physical torture i think that's possible that a person could endure i think it's um and it's funny i remember i saw a clip on uh youtube it's an old it's an old black and white clip where um a psychiatrist is talking to a depressed chronic a chronically depressed patient okay and this man this man said it resonated with me so much and to this day depression isn't isn't you're not you're not scared of depression is like hell in the sense that you're not worried about the like the pain and like the torture it's the hopelessness that you'll never get out it's the hopelessness. Right. It's knowing that there is no light at the end of the tunnel. It's not what you're going through. You're going through it. You're in it. Whatever that is, whatever symptom it is, you're going through it. But it's the hopelessness that I just, yeah, some people can't get out and I encourage, man, I encourage you to, if you're going through it, man, go speak to someone, man. And it's not weird. I never thought it was weird. I never, I'm so blessed for me, for myself, that I had a mom that encouraged me to go talk to someone. Right? If I, if I went up to her and told her that I'm going through something, she would say, okay, what do you want? Like, do you want to go talk to someone? What do you want? Like, what, what is, what do you think you need to do? And I say, I need to talk to someone. Right. And she, it was never like a, oh, suck it up. Oh, well, you should be doing this. This is why you're fearing the pest. I was like, okay, yeah. It's, you're, you're feeling it. It's real. And I completely understand with you and I will be here for you. So what do you want to do? What do you got to do? And I will help you every step of the way. And I'm I'm very blessed that I'm like that. But a lot of people don't have that luxury, man. A lot of people don't have that support. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're you're lucky. I mean, there there are times. Um, there have been times in my life where. Yeah, I I've never had any anyone. That has, I've never had anyone say you should go see somebody you should go see a therapist like find find someone to talk to the the responses that i only ever got were oh just the, you know something to the effect of just suck it up like just stop just just change your mindset just stop thinking that way you can't think about that you know kind of a thing and that isn't great and you know we're pretty lucky in this country in canada with healthcare where, you know, there's certain things that are covered, you know, you can go find a place to talk to and you're not going to walk out with a really, really high bill. Right. So we're lucky in that way. And, uh, you know, if you can't, if, 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 if there's no one that you can go to in your family, you know, you should probably 
seek out professional help. You should do that anyway, because unfortunately, sometimes your family is just not helpful. You know, you love them and you love your friends, but sometimes those are not the right. And they just don't know how to help, man. They don't know. They don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. Oh no! Right? It's, it's awkward. They want to help you. They want the best for you. They they don't want you to feel that way, but they just don't know what to say. Like if someone, like the the person that told me, oh, you got to count your blessings. They're genuinely trying to help me, but they don't know that I actually made me feel 20,000 times worse. Right? So, yeah, I think we're going to, I'm going to bring on a lot of, we're going to bring in a lot more mental health. Yeah. We, we, yeah, I would love to have some, some actual professional people that deal with this, that, mm -hmm. you know, therapists, psychologists, that sort of stuff. Yeah. People that are qualified to talk about it. It'd be interesting to hear from their perspective too, right? Yeah. We'll, we'll do that. I think, I think that's a good place to, to end. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Okay. But we got to, the people at home just remember to, uh, you know what we always say on this podcast, right? Enjoy your day. Every day. Enjoy your 24, man. Enjoy your 24. Enjoy your day, man. Honestly, I mean, life's short. Really, it is. Got to make the best of it, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, I feel really, uh, I mean, just one more point, like, don't be afraid to speak up man don't be afraid like would you rather feel would you rather be going through the pain that you're going through or speaking up and getting rid of that pain right that's what it comes down to honestly right like is it worth going through the anguish and the the suffering just because you don't want to sound soft you don't want to sound like you're you don't want to you don't you want to you don't want to annoy anyone you don't want to be a burden on anyone get over that man just just do it just do what's best for you say what you got to say do what you got to do that's it if, it if it means you'll you'll get out of that out of that hell it's all i'm all it's all for it man don't think twice yeah. and on that note enjoy your 24 man episode 25 right last one was 24 yeah, yeah. episode 25 25 god damn who would have guessed who would have known Thank you for listening. This is episode 25. Like and subscribe, comment, share. I love all the support. Any final words, Alex? Well said. Well said. We'll see you next time. Absolutely. Peace. <laughs>